When you're meditating, you're sending energy out into the world. So you want to make sure you're sending good energy. There are times when you think, well, this meditation is good enough for me, I'll let it pass. But if you realize well, you're giving this to someone else at the same time, sometimes you feel a little bit ashamed. So that's one way of motivating yourself to really put some energy into your meditation. So the energy that comes out is going to be something you'd really be proud to show to someone else or share with someone else. So focus on the quality of your meditation. Sometimes we put too much effort into efforting. In other words, we use a lot of stress and strain thinking that that's effort. Well, effort is not that kind of thing. John Fuang said, and it was a, it was a pun in Thai, he said it's a little thing they have to maintain mindfulness, but it's something you have to do continually. It's the continually that, where the effort is. But for each moment of mindfulness, it's just there, there, there. You remember to say, right here, right here, that's all. You don't have to push, you don't have to squeeze things out. But you do have to make the effort continuous. One way of doing this, of course, is to make it interesting. It's when you play with the breath. Try down-going breath for a while, and then try up-going breath and see which one feels better. You think of the breath as a energy coming in through your pores and coming into a, a line right, drawn right down the middle of your body. You breathe in, it comes in that direction, breathe out, it goes out, out to the pores again. What does that do to the way you feel the breath? What does that do to the messages your mind is sending down to the muscles of the body about how to breathe? Because these perceptions can have a huge influence on what's going on in the body. So if you play with the breath in this way, it starts getting interesting. When it's interesting, it doesn't require that much force to stay. You're exploring, you're learning something new about this element, this property of the body, and seeing what use can be made out of it. It's like getting a brand new stereo and turning all the knobs and dials in different directions to see what kind of sounds you can make. And at first things will be a little bit out of balance when you turn the volume way up and almost blow out your ears. And then you throw it way down. Then you can't hear it. Then you go back and forth. You finally get to the point where it's just right. The same with the bass, the same with the treble, same with all the other knobs and levers you've got on that, on your stereo. And it's with the breath. You can try long breathing for a while. What's, what's really long breathing like? What's really short breathing like? Really deep, really shallow, really heavy, really light. And as you explore this, you don't even think about having to stay with the breath. You get interested in what's going on. And that way the effort becomes a lot more effortless, and something is easier and easier to maintain. Because what we're looking for here is a state of mind that you can maintain in all situations, which means that you have to learn how to do it efficiently, so that the energy that comes out of it is more than the energy you put in. That'll take a period of adjustment. And everybody goes through wild swings of going too far in one direction, too far in another direction. Even John Munn said it was, that was the nature of his practice, that's the nature of everybody's practice. But finally you got a point of just right. And when it's just right, things feel so good, again, that it's not so much effort that has to go into staying here. In the beginning, of the, the, the main challenge then is learning how to adjust the effort so it's just right effort and accept the fact that you're going to go to extremes, but you want to learn from them. That's how the meditation develops.